This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. I know you saw the thumbnail, and I know an angry mob of Barb and Star fans is probably gathering outside my door as we speak, but let me clarify. I'm on your side. I don't think Barb and Star is a bad studio comedy. I actually think it's a great movie that through its style and reception calls attention to and almost represents the decline of modern comedic filmmaking. Barb and Star is a 2021 movie starring and written by Kristen Wiig and Annie Mamulo, the people that brought you Bridesmaids. It's about two extremely Midwestern middle-aged women leaving the Midwest for the first time to go to Vista Del Mar. Let's just say things don't exactly go as planned. I think my idea to make a video about this movie and what it says about modern Modern comedy started when I decided to talk about it on my podcast, and my co-host and I struggled to really talk about the movie and were instead more fascinated with its existence. Because this really is, at the end of the day, just a collection of bits that sort of tie into a really absurd but cookie cutter plot. As much as I want to say Barb and Star is barely a movie, it is one. It just isn't the one I'm used to seeing nowadays. It's one that is centered on comedy and is not concerned with any sort of drama which is weirdly rare and worth talking about. If I were to describe Barb and Star, it's like those old Zucker Brothers movies like Airplane and The Naked Gun combined with the poppy contemporary tone of like 22 Jump Street or Bridesmaids. It's also very, very weird. Some of it feels like it could be on Adult Swim. Something I really like about Barb and Star is that instead of doing what most comedies do, which is find the dramatic, heartfelt side in the last 45 minutes, it instead cranks up the absurdity. The film actually starts off kinda weak in my opinion and like nothing we haven't seen before with the evil scientist and the cliche middle aged midwestern person voices, but the further into it you get, the film really flies off the rails for the better as you learn more and more about these characters. It's about an evil villain who wants to send out a bunch of mosquitoes to this town to kill everybody because she used to get bullied to a point where she got launched out of a cannon, but when she sends out her henchman Edgar, he ends up intertwined in the lives of Barb and Star, and things get real complicated. See, everything about this film is ridiculous. The villain is weird, and her plan is weird, and the reasoning for her plan is weird and the thing that ruins the plan is weird, and the guy involved in ruining the plan is weird. It feels like the kind of story you would write at a middle school sleepover, but Wig and Mamulo managed to actually get it financed and made, which is fantastic. Because this is a true comedy, a comedy with a solid joke per minute ratio, where the jokes are, get this, actually thought out and funny. Not 90 minutes of actors standing around doing improv and calling it a day. Which really makes you think, is this really absurd and surreal, or or are we just not used to comedies being comedies? No, it's pretty weird. The sad thing is, Barb and Star didn't make the waves I think it was planning on making. My first memory with the film was seeing the teaser for it before The Rise of Skywalker, which is like an insane commercial spot. It's like the Super Bowl commercial of movies. I mean, this was supposed to be a summer smash, and it was one of the films that got completely destroyed by the pandemic, originally planning to get released in the summer of 2020, and eventually just getting dropped digitally February 2021, which is just so unbelievably unfortunate as this is totally the kind of thing you'd want to see in a theater. But Barb and Star wasn't a total disaster. It performed pretty well as a rented title on Apple TV+, and it's no secret that it was a success with most critics. I mean, it even made it onto Rolling Stone's Best Movies of 2021 list in July, so it's not a failure by any means. But that's not really the point. What I'm trying to say is it wasn't doing Bridesmaids numbers. That movie raked in over $200 million on a $30 million budget, and even got nominated for Best Original Screenplay at the Oscars. It was a whole ass thing. My mom was quoting that shit for years. When I asked my mom if she had seen Barb and Star, she went, Oh, that movie? Yeah, that looks bad. This is not me trying to trash Barb and Star. I can't emphasize how much I like this movie. It's really just me saying the times have changed, and they've changed a lot. When you look at something as unapologetically over-the-top and fun as Barb and Star, the distraction that so many people claim we need more of in film, and you see the unenthused response to it, you can't deny the industry is confused and changing, and you also kind of wonder, do people just not know how to have fun anymore? To try and put into words what a modern comedy feels like is kind of tricky. When you think of some of the best comedies of the last few years, you think about 
I don't know, Booksmart, Palm Springs, Lady Bird, Jojo Rabbit, Shiva Baby, uh, Borat subsequent movie film. And I love all of these movies, but they don't feel like full comedies. They aren't super bad or Mean Girls or Bridesmaids or Talladega Nights or the first Borat. If any of those films came out today, they'd most likely just get dumped on Hulu and forgotten about in the next four months. These new ones all have this dramatic edge to them that has propelled a lot of them to critical acclaim. Because adding something more serious to a film to give it something to connect to while also giving the viewer something to laugh at is just automatically going to make it somebody's new favorite movie. And you really can't blame the filmmakers or the studios for aiming for this quality, because who doesn't want to reach for that kind of status instead of haha <laughs> fart status? Nobody wants fart status. And any comedy that isn't aiming for that is like Tag or The Happy Time Murderers or Night School, just the most forgettable and lazy examples of comedic filmmaking. And that's kind of where the comedy landscape is right now. You're either fresh out of Sundance and might win a Golden Globe, or you're the worst trailer you've seen all year. Not that it's at all the same thing, but it's probably part of the reason why so many people are head over heels over the new Jackass film. It is pure entertainment that was made to entertain. There's no dullness with Jackass, it's just talented guys doing dumb things that make you laugh. And to get the money to make a movie where that's the main takeaway is just not the norm anymore. I promise this will hopefully be the last time I talk about this man, but the executive producer of Barb and Star, Adam McKay, is like the exact example of this. Not not to say I don't like some of Adam McKay's new work, some of it does work for me, but I just watched The Simpsons movie, which is about a society coming to terms with them being at fault for the world ending, and then they ignore it, and then they have to save themselves, and it's kind of very similar to Don't Look Up, which is a movie about a comet hurtling towards the Earth with a 100% chance of destroying the planet and everyone trying to figure out what to do. But The Simpsons movie was hilarious, it has an amazing joke per minute ratio, because it's ridiculous. What hurt about watching Don't Look Up was that some of it was kind of funny. The bits do shine through here and there, and because it's an all-star cast performing the jokes, and because it takes place in a pretty chaotic situation, of course the jokes land. And it sucks because I wish 90% of the movie was funny instead of like 15%. Comedic filmmaking, bringing people joy, making someone laugh on a bad day, that's the stuff that I really, really care about. That's the stuff that most of the time actually resonates with me more than stuff that tries to take itself seriously in the wrong places. These aren't the most prestigious or artsy movies, but pop star Never Stop Never Stopping means just as much to me as like the tree of life. And I just wish filmmakers and studios, and at this point audiences were acknowledging this value as much as me and so many other comedy fans do. But maybe, you know, it is a little bit on us. I think it would be silly to blame all of this on studios, even though they seem like the obvious source to blame because they're the ones that aren't making the things. But Honestly, they're just paying attention to audiences, and audiences aren't interested in comedies, and they don't want to lose money, so what are they supposed to do, you know? People only go to the theater if it's something they feel is worth leaving the house for, like the big finale of a massive franchise like Endgame, or something that can only truly be experienced on the big screen like Dune. Basically, action, sci-fi, and the occasional drama if it seems like it's getting some buzz. But comedies are just not the talk of the town anymore, and that's been the case. When I went to see Tag in theaters, it was empty, and that that was like opening night. And when I went to see Game Night, it wasn't that packed either, and you can see that in its performance. One of these is a good movie, one of them is bad, but the one thing these two have in common is that they're comedies that nobody really saw. Nobody is going out of their way to drive to a theater and pay the price and sit down so they can watch something that's most of the time not even funnier than most of what they can find online. Or on streaming services. I feel like streaming services are the prime reason, no pun intended, for people's disinterest in comedic filmmaking. Streaming services are literally with not only classic comedy shows, but also new shows that are short and funny and fill that need. There's also TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, which I'd say are all mostly fueled by comedic content. And this is all to say that people get their comedic fix way easier these days than they used to, especially now that everything is run by an algorithm that knows what you like and is tailored for you to waste as much time by not wasting your time by looking for what you want. This is probably why SNL just isn't as great anymore, slash why people don't watch it as much. Yes, it's because NBC is limiting the potential of the writers, but it's also because it's just not your only source for
for good comedy anymore. It's like if you live in a small town and Panda Express is the only Chinese restaurant. You're gonna go to that Panda Express all the time and you're gonna like it because you don't know any better. But when the city grows and you have like 50 new Chinese restaurants to try, I don't think Panda Express is gonna be anyone's first choice anymore. Not to say comedies are bad for you like Panda Express. I, you know, Panda Express has tons of hits. Maybe that wasn't the best analogy. But what I'm trying to say is attention spans are extremely short. People don't like taking chances with their time. If they want a comedy, a 20 minute episode of The Office will do the job. They'll save their precious movie watching time for the serious stuff, for something that'll feel substantial and good. And when that's your reasoning, which might not be yours, but I feel like is a lot of people's, it makes you think, why should I watch comedy movies? It seems like a dying form and maybe that's for the better? If a bit is destined to grow old after a while and if it's just the least accessible way of consuming a joke, why does any of this matter? because it's fucking fun. This is when I want to loop things back to Barb and Star, because Barb and Star is an insane movie in the kind of way that reminds you what the purpose of comedic cinema is. I'm being serious here. There are giant musical dance numbers, cheesy but never not hilarious or justified VFX, editing gags that could only be done in a film context, big music choices, twists, turns, a drug trip scene, reusing the same actor for two characters just because, over the top flashbacks. Barb and Star is, at the end of the day, a cinematic experience, not a TV show turned into a movie. From the start, this had to be a movie. And that's what comedy gains through filmmaking, a larger scale, the freedom to do more with a joke, the weight that accompanies each gag. You're not just blowing air out of your nostrils, the muscles are being put to use, you're giving this a whole hearty laugh. Not to mention the incomparable joy to be felt in a theater full of other people laughing along. I know that's a lot to ask for at this point, but man what a feeling. Being transported into a world of gags is important, making someone laugh, letting them forget about everything else that's important. And that is, to me, why in a film industry so bent on winning awards and taking itself seriously, I'm so grateful for movies like Barb and Star that can make the most out of cinema while still having a shit ton of fun in the process. Because at the end of the day, is that not what this is all about? And you know what? That's all I gotta say. Thanks for watching. Go watch Barb and Star and form your own opinion. And before you head out, hey, I hope you liked that video. I really liked that video. I thought that was one of my better ones. Th um, before you head out, though, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, it's a place where you can go online to build that brand of yours, whether it be an online store, a blog, a portfolio, you name it. They have professional portfolio designs where you can create galleries for your work as well as password-protected pages for clients. I personally like their video block feature, which allows me to showcase some of my favorite work, whether it be videos or films, in a really pretty way. Not to mention, they have a great mobile web designer, which makes it so that your website will look great no matter what platform it's on while still matching your style. But the best part about it is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. Lads, Squarespace is great. And if you are ever thinking like, oh, should I do it? Should I not? Now's the time to do it. So thanks again for watching. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.